Tell me, I mean, uh, the, the real estate sector, which you have been closely watching since 1978, when you came and joined your uncle, like HD yes. Parekh. And people say that HD Parekh was the founder of HDFC, but you are actually the entrepreneur professional who made HDFC what is today. What's happening in the real estate sector? I mean, the, the prices are back to the pre-crisis level, to 2007 level, and even higher in some pockets in India. So, do you see the bubbles there? See, I think when you talk of real estate in India, it's too broad a subject. Mm. First of all, you have to segregate between urban and rural. Right. Then you have to segregate between residential, commercial and retail. Yeah. So, if you look at urban India, where prices have really gone up, and let me start with the retail sector. Yeah. Retail sector prices have come down. Large number of malls across the country are empty. Existing tenants are not renewing leases because lack of demand, mm -hmm. lack of sales in their shops. Rents across India have come down in retail space and will come down further because of empty space and new construction of malls and shopping areas. Mm -hmm. Same is the story with commercial. Today, Nariman Point was quoting 450 rupees three years ago. Today, you can get it for 200 rupees. That's because you have seen BKC coming up. No, it's not because of BKC. Ah. It's not because of because ex extent of supply has okay. increased. Oversupply. Supply has increased significantly. IT supply, commercial supply, oh. and again not in Bombay, across the country. Right. So prices and commercials are soft. Hmm. Space is available. Hmm. Best quality, second best quality, poor quality, any area, any locality, any part of the country. Space, commercial space, IT space is available a plenty. So I don't see that commercial prices are going to go up in a hurry, whether for rental or for purchase. Mm. Now we come to the big market, the residential market. Right. Residential market, Bombay, Delhi is different from rest of the country. If you look at rest of the country, prices have not gone up significantly. If you look at Chennai, they have not come back to 2007. They have right? not come back, and prices are even not escalating. Okay. And stock is available, supply is available. Mm. It is Bombay and Delhi which is the main problem. But tell us, Mr. Pari, we see even in Mumbai suburbs, you know that there are there are houses which cannot be sold. They are not being sold, but builders can hold on to them month after month. How so, long will they hold on? How long will they keep stock in trade? Huh. How long can they continue paying higher and higher interest costs on that? Right. At some stage, they have to liquidate their stocks. And I'm hopeful that as and when an individual developer feels the pinch, developer is unable to access capital markets anymore. You've not seen any builder doing right. an IPO for yeah. last one year. The market is dead for IPO. For so you, you are hinting at a crash sometime? I'm not thinking, I'm not hinting at a crash. I've always okay. expected a crash which has never materialized. Okay. So I cannot hint at a crash. Huh. But I think the days of increasing prices, the days of prices going higher, huh. whether in Delhi or Bombay are over. So there are no bubbles? There are no bubbles. I don't think prices will keep on going up because okay. there's no takers at even these prices. Okay. But tell us, uh, Mr. Parekh, that on the one hand, property prices are so high. On the other hand, cost of money is going up for higher. the consumers as well. You know, even your HDFC has risen. Uh, you have raised it about three times uh, since January, your interest rate. Interest rate since January? Yeah. There's three months we have yeah. not raised it three times. I twice. Think from twice you raised it. Yeah, twice. Right. So do you see any impact on the demand uh, for home loans? So far, we've not seen an impact on the demand. Mm -hmm. But if it continues like this, I'm sure we may see some demand. Demand slow down. Slow down. Yeah. At the moment, you see what is growing, uh, what is spurring our growth hmm. is really smaller cities. Right. Is really tier two and tier three cities. And the low cost and housing? The low that's, cost. That's the buzzword know, now? The low cost is the buzzword. Huh. There are half a dozen developers who have started low cost housing. Huh. Um, flats of seven and ten lakhs in urban metros. Hmm. Now there's huge demand for those. So but the tell, value of each loan is less, but we have done many, many loans in Bangalore. But tell us something. You said you are not seeing any bubble. But is there something inherently, fundamentally wrong in the Indian real estate sector? The real estate sector has uh, lots of issues. Hmm. I think it's difficult in an interview like this to talk about the ills of the real estate sector. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have been saying over and over again hmm. that real estate is one subject or one asset a family buys is the 
highest he spends in his lifetime. Yeah. But for that we don't have a regulator. Yes. We have no one who regulates. Anyone, you and I can become builders tomorrow. You and I can raise money from the gullible public. If you put up a board, Tamal Bandopadhyay is coming up with a housing project. You put up a board, you'll get advances. That is the shortage and that's the desperation of people. Yeah. That people are willing to trust anyone and everyone because they're desperate to own a roof over their head. Now, why can't we have a regulator who moderates, who supervises, who regulates this sector? It's a state subject. Why can't states have regulators? You have MERC. The you have MERC and in, CERC. Why yeah, can't you have yeah, a similar yeah, model yeah. in real yeah. estate? Mm. Today, I get every day scores of letters from people mm. that the builder has taken two more years. The builder is not giving my house. He's not giving my money back. Mm. He's not willing to pay interest. The building is ready, but he's asking for one lakh more. He's squeezing the last ounce from me. But who well, what can we do? We can't do anything today. The builder who, is willing to give your money back if you don't want the place. But who do so you blame? Where, where does a poor consumer go? Uh, but tell us, uh, Mr. Pai, who do you blame for this? Is the, is, are the builders to be blamed solely or the system? Because you, know, you need so many you know, palm greasing at various levels. You need so many um, you know, It's a whole system. Everything from approval process. Right. Why do you need multiplicity of approvals? Right. Why can't we have a single point of approval in a city? Mm. Why can't the municipal corporation get other approvals from water and sewage and all the other approvals necessary? It's part of a municipal corporation's job, fire and everything. Why should we send everyone to 23, 30 different departments? It delays the process. Mm. It takes more money. It takes more time. Time is money. Builders... Uh, um, run their operations on borrowed money. They borrow from informal market at exorbitant rates of interest. So all this is added to the consumer so, cost. So regulator is the solution? Regulator is one of the solutions. How do you cleanse the system? How do you improve the system? But why isn't the government listening to you? Because you have been the government's um, unofficial crisis manager for decades now. You know, you know, 10 years back, UTI, you cleaned and you restructured. Two years, three years back, Satam, uh, the entire problem, it was, it, it came See, to... The other, the other you, know, issue. You, you figured out how to sort this out. So government listens to you, you know, um, you have government's years, PMO's years. Every, every 15 days we hear that, you know, some emergency meeting, whether it's infrastructure, it's telecom, um, you, you, you are running, you know, to attend a meeting at PMO. Why doesn't government listen to you this? Meaning there are stronger lobbies where Deepak Parekh can't... Uh, no, I don't think there are stronger lobbies. I think there is a new... It's a, new, uh, it's a new innovative thing hmm. and I think it takes time. The urban ministry has to take more initiative. Hmm. And you know in each state, the urban ministry is always with the chief minister. Hmm. My point is why does not the urban ministry, what is so special about urban that no chief minister wants to give it up? Why? Why, why should the urban, chief minister who has a number of other things to do in the entire state does not give up the urban ministry. The urban portfolio is always with the chief minister.